نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وملة أبينا إبراهيم حنيفا مسلما وما كان من المشركين فإذا التمسك بالدين كلما كنت متمسكا كلما كنت عاقلا حقيقة كلما كنت بعيدا عن المعاصي والذنوب كلما كنت عاقلا فلذلك جاء الإسلام للمحافظة على العقل أيضا لأن هذا من الضروريات فإذا فعل المعاصي مما ينافي العقل السليم والفطر المستقيمة الفطر المستقيمة نعم وهذا سيأتي معنا أيضا في في المحافظة محافظة الدين على العرض ومحافظة الدين أيضا على المال بأن بأن المحافظة على هذه الضروريات الخمس تزيدك عقلا وتزيدك ثباتا ومعرفة بمحاسن الدين معرفة بمحاسن الدين والكلام عن العقل وما جاء الإسلام بالمحافظة عليه والكلام يا إخوة في مسألة الخمر كل ما غطى العقل لأن الخمر بعض الناس اليوم يظن أنه الخمر هذا الذي يشرب فقط أو, 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 أو أنه هذا الذي هو النبيذ أو الذي يتخذ من العنب أو فقط كل ما خامر العقل فهو خمر كل ما أسكر فهو حرام كل ما أسكر فهو حرام وقيل له خمر لأنه يغطي العقل فالحشيش هذا يعني له حكم الخمر لأنه يغطي يغطي العقل كذلك المخدرات ولذلك جاء الإسلام بأشد العقوبات على هؤلاء الذين يعني يفعلونها لما لأنهم يسعون إلى إفساد عقول الناس الذي هو مناط التكليف فيصبحون يعني يدمرون المجتمعات يدمرون المجتمعات بتدمير عقولهم ولذلك يقول أعداء الإسلام إذا أردت أن تدمر يعني شعبا فدمر عقوله أولا أدخل على عقولهم ما يفسدها فيرى الشيء الطيب سيء ويرى الشيء السيء طيب وانتبهوا بأن الدين جاء لتعزيز الفطرة والعقل السليم وليس أن الدين جاء لإهمال العقل وليس لأيضا يعني أيضا ما جاء الدين لإلغاء العقل كما يقول العقلنا والعقلانيون اليوم ما جاء الدين لإلغاء العقل يقولون أنتم الشريعة تريدون إلغاء العقل هذا ليس بصحيح الدين جاء لتعريف العقل حده ومكانه لأن العقل العقل له حد وله مكان مثل البصر ومثل غيره من الحواس لها مكانة يجب أن تقف عندها فلا يقدم العقل على النقل ما يقدم العقل على الدين لأن الدين جاء من عند الله وهو وحي ولذلك لو قدم العقل على الدين لأصبح العقل هو الشرع والعقل خادم وليس حاكم الحاكم هو الشرع افعل لا تفعل وأنت عليك أن تعقل بأن هذا خير لك وأن هذا هو يعني أنه به صلاحك ولو كنت يعني عقلك صحيح لعلمت ذلك وأما إذا فسد حشاكم جميعا بأمور بأهواء وأراء فإنه قد يرى أن هذا يعني ليس مناسبا له ولذلك يقول علي رضي الله عنه لو كان الدين بالرأي لكان مسح أسفل الخف أولى من مسح أعلى لكن الدين ليس بالرأي الدين قال الله قال رسوله فإذا يا إخوة تقديم العقول على النقول هذا باطل لأن الله تعبدنا بالشرع وجعل العقول لإدراك الشرع جعل العقول للعمل وإدراك الشرع وليس جعل العقول مشرعة لذلك لا اجتهاد مع النص وإنما الاجتهاد في فهم النص 
ولا تقل لما أمر الله وقل بما أمر الله لأن لما اعتراضية لما اعتراضية وبما آه يعني استفهامية وأنت عليك أن تستفهم بماذا أمر الله حتى أفعل أما لما هذا اعتراض وأنت الله عز وجل لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون آه هذا ما يعني أردت آه جمعه في هذا الباب وكما ذكرنا أن الباب من باب آه يعني جمع الشتات وذكر بعض اللفتات والفوائد ونسأل الله عز وجل أن يسلم عقولنا من الشرك والبدع والمعاصي كما نسأله سبحانه وتعالى أن يعيذنا وإياكم من مضلات الفتن إنه جواد كريم ورب غفور رحيم Also, from that which tells us that the religion of Islam came to protect the intellects is the prohibition of sins. Because we find that all of the sins and all of the forms of disobedience and the shameful acts of sin that religion of Islam came to prohibit, that they go, they go against the sound mind. And one's sound mind and one's correct natural dispos dispos disposition, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the people upon, that they come in agreement with, with this prohibition of those sins. And the sound minds that never reject those prohibitions of sins and disobedience that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated upon us. All of the sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited upon us and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa forbade us from, we find that they go in agreement with the sound mind. That the sound mind rejects and dislikes those sins. Rather, we find that the sound minds, they reject those sins even if they did not know about the legislation or even before the, legis the legislation came down. For example, we find that the one who claims, as our Shaykh Abdullah mentioned earlier, that the one who says and claims that he does whatever he wants and that he is not bound by any religion or any legislation, and rather, whatever he sees fit, he does. In reality, this is a madman. And he makes a fool of himself. Whereas the one who, the one who does that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him to do, is the one who is wise. And you find that the one who does whatever he wants, he is like a madman. Because there is no difference between him and a madman. What is the, the definition of a madman? He is the one who does whatever he likes, whenever he likes. Not bound by any by anything. لذلك ابن حبان في كتابه روضة العقلاء وهذا كتاب يا إخوة طلاب العلم ينبغي أن يقرأوه روضة العقلاء يقول من كان على لسانه من كان يقول بلسانه كل ما يخطر على قلبه فهو أحمق. والآن يمدح بعض الناس يقول لك فلان اللي في قلبه على لسانه ها فلان الذي في قلبه على لسانه قال هذا هو الأحمق لأن ليس كل ما يخطر على قلبك تتحدث به بلسانك نعم يعني في كلمات ما يعني تخطر لكن ما يجوز لك أن تقولها لأن فيها مفاسد وفيها أيضا أمور يعني لا تليق نعم جزاكم الله خير شيخنا الله he said ابن حبان رحمه الله in his book روضة العقلاء this is a book that our Sheikh حفظه الله he said that it is, it is upon the students of knowledge to read this book for its benefit he said that whomsoever says anything that is in his heart is a, is a fool or makes a fool of himself nowadays People are praised that whatever is in their heart is on their tongue. As soon as they think of something, they, they utter it and they speak it. This is not something to be praised about. This is uh, because there are things that cause harm. If, if spoken of and if uttered, they cause harm. They cause, uh, there are things that one sh should not speak and should not say. And from the wisdom is to hide these things and not speak of them and not utter them. <laughs> ما لم تعمل أو تتكلم 
ان الله تجاوز عن امتي ما حدثت بها انفسها ما لم تعمل او تتكلم الله سبحانه وتعالى he forgave for this ummah what's in their hearts as long as they do not speak it or act upon it what they think about is Allah سبحانه وتعالى has forgiven for the people for their thoughts as long as they don't act or speak and an example that our Shaykh Habibullah mentioned in regards to the things that are from the sins and the acts of disobedience that people who have sound minds and who, who are wise should avoid and should come to know naturally with their sound mind that it is something that is disliked and that is something that is evil is intoxicant, using any intoxicant. For this reason, because it takes the person's mind away and he starts acting like a madman. For this reason, it is said that it is the mother of all evil, intoxicants, alcohol, and other than that. No, it will come later. The one who does, who drinks or takes intoxicants, he becomes like a madman. Because the madman, he does, as was mentioned before, he does whatever he wants. And the one who drinks intoxicants, he starts acting and doing whatever he wants without thinking about what he is doing. Some of the people in the pre-Islamic era, uh, the pre-Islamic era of ignorance, before Islam, they said things regarding regarding some of those sins which Islam came to pro prohibit, because Islam came to fulfill and to complete the good manners, and it came to strengthen that which what people would have naturally from the natural disposition that they have and natural belief that they have, and the, what naturally their sound minds tell them to stay away from, Islam came to establish that and to strengthen it. And from that is, for example, the statement of Antar ibn Shaddad, who was before, at the time before Islam, that he said in his lines of poetry, that I, uh, I lower my gaze when my female neighbor passes by until my female neighbor enters into her house. This is from the things that people would knew naturally, with their natural disposition that they are supposed to do. For example, could any, any person who has sound mind say that lying is good? Of course not. Any wise person knows that lying is bad. And Islam came to establish that. For this reason, it is said that um, the one, if you, it is said that if you lie, if you are a liar, you better, be, you better have good memory. Because the one who lies, eventually he starts forgetting the lies that he made and starts contradicting himself. And it is said that if you are, if you are a liar, then you, you better have strong memory. And if you are truthful, then it doesn't matter. Because you remember the truth. The truth is something that one remembers. It is the lies that people start forgetting. لذلك لما بايع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم النساء وأن لا يأتينا بفاحشة قالت إحداهن أو تزني الحرة الزنا لم يكن إلا في يعني في 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 العبيد وليس في الأحرار كان في الإماء وليس في الأحرار وإذا قالت أو تزني الحرة هذا شيء ما هو معروف بل إن الكذب نفسه يقول أنس رضي الله عنه ما كنا نعلم ما هو الكذب حتى أنزل الله عز وجل فيه ما أنزل ما كنا نعرف ما هو الكذب يعني هذا ولذلك حتى أبو سفيان قال والله أني خشيت أن يؤثر علي الكذب ولو لم أخشى ذلك لكذبت على الرسول كانوا يعني كانوا يتنزهون ينزهون أنفسهم عن الكذب وإن كانوا عيدا بلا يقعون في الكذب على الله عز وجل ولكنهم الكذب في حديث الناس هذا شيء كبير جدا عند الكفار فضلا عن المسلمين قال ما كنا نعرف ما كنا نعرف ما هو الكذب يقول أنا سرد عن حتى يعني يعني حتى يعني حذرنا منه أو كذا بمعنى هذا الكلام ويعني يعني حتى قال بعض السلف والله ما كنا ما كنا يعني نعرف أو ما كنا نظن أن يعلو رجل ذكرا يعني ذكرا أو ما كنا نعنا يعني نظن أن يعلو رجل رجلا حتى ذكر الله عز وجل في القرآن يعني قوم لوط ما كنا نظن هذا أبدا أن يعلو الرجل الرجل عياذا بالله 
حتى أخبر الله عز وجل عنه في القرآن فلما أخبر الله عز وجل عن أقوام قال يعني آمنا بذلك وإلا ما كن ما كان هذا يخطر ببالنا قط نعم Our Shaykh Habibullah, may Allah preserve him and protect him and reward him with good. He mentioned many examples that we can take from the things that the people would consider to be to, to be shameful things and things that they would stay away from and would not do based upon their understanding and their sound minds before the legislation and without uh, without the legislation. For example, when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said to the women, "Give me a, give me the pledge that." And he mentioned as part of the pledge that you do not, that you keep your uh, chastity. A woman said, would a free woman ever commit adultery? This is something that was not known to them. This is not something that they would ever do. And it was something that they knew that free women and free people would not commit adultery. And likewise, when uh, Anas radiallahu anhu, he said, we did not even know about lying or we did not know what lying is until it came to be clarified to us. And what we were told about it and warned against it, then we came to know that some people actually lie. And this is similar to Abu Sufyan radiallahu anh, before, before he was a Muslim, during the debate with uh, Hercules, that he said to him, that he said, he himself said, if it wasn't that I would be called a liar, I would have lied about the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa So they would stay away from lying. And um, also, and this is in regards to disbelievers. How about the Muslims? Also, some of the setup, uh, they said, we would, if it wasn't that Allah SWT mentioned that there were people who committed uh, homosexuality, we didn't, would not even imagine that this could be possible, that uh, there would be any, any form of homosexuality. So if you were to go to a, pe to a person who has sound mind, sound intellect, and you tell him that in Islam, Allah SWT prohibited lying, backbiting, cheating, stealing, etc. Anyone who has sound mind will say yes, those are things that are, that are good, meaning staying away from them is good because those are evil actions and sins. So a sound game with that which is agreeable, agreeable with a sound mind. And no one turns away from this religion of Islam except one who makes fool, who makes fool of himself. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and who, no one turns away from the religion of Ibrahim, except one who is who makes a fool of himself. And this is the, the religion of Ibrahim. It is the same as the religion of our Prophet Muhammad This is why we say in the morning and the evening, we, we wake up on the religion, uh, on the natural belief of Islam and the statement of sincerity, of ikhlas, of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with no partners. And upon the religion of our Prophet Muhammad and on the religion of Ibrahim And this is uh, also our Shaykh Abdullah said it will come later also when discussing the protection of the religion of Islam towards uh, the honor uh, as well as uh, the wealth that we find that all of that is also in agreement with a sound mind. And when you come to know that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated from the protection of those five necessities, you come to know more the religion of Islam and you come to love the religion of Islam more. Our Shaykh Abdullah said that we mentioned intoxicants and alcohol. Some people, they think when they read the verses and they listen to the hadith regarding, uh, regarding al-khamr, that it is just merely the wine or things that are made from either grapes or barley or whatever it is and they think this is the only intoxicant or this is the khamr this is uh, that that merely is the khamr and this is not the correct and rather the khamr that is prohibited is anything that causes intox intoxication whether it is a person uh, drinks or sniffs or uh, smokes or whatever it is from the likes of uh, marijuana and drugs and other than that, everything that causes intoxication is khamr and is prohibited and is impermissible. And Islam came with those legal punishments that we know about regarding those intoxicants because it is because those intoxicants they corrupt the brains and they cause the person to act like a madman as was mentioned before and it causes the corruption of communities and of countries such that we find that the enemies of Islam, they say, if you want to, to destroy a nation, then corrupt their minds. 
Because if you corrupt their minds, they become corrupted completely. And the Islam came to strengthen the mind and the sound mind. However, it comes with knowing its limits. Just like, just like we know that our sight has limits and all, all of the things that we have, they have limits. We should know that minds have limits. Some people, they say that the, the mind that they should use, one should use his mind and they claim that the religion of Islam, it, came, it comes with uh, preventing the use of mind, of sound mind. And it comes in opposition to the sound mind and that one should not pay attention to the legislation. This is their claim, and this is not correct. And what they say is that, that the one's sound mind should, should precede any legislation. And that is, that is not correct. As our Shaykh Abdullah mentioned, that first of all, sound mind comes in agreement with the legislation of Islam. And also we should know that the minds have a limit. And that we are supposed to use our minds and our intellects in understanding the legislation. Not in judging over the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you, if you use your mind to judge over the legislation, then you give precedence to your mind over the text from the Quran and the Sunnah, and this is false, and this is incorrect. And if you have strong mind and strong mind and uh, correct intellect, then you should come to know that it, what is upon you is to follow the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to use that sound mind in understanding the, legis the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the statement of Ali radiallahu anh, where he said, if the, if the religion was based upon one's intellect, then wiping over the sack, or under the sack, would be, or, or would be more, or under the khuf, would be more correct than wiping on top of them. So meaning that the legislation and the religion is not based upon one's intellect, and rather one uses his intellect in understanding the religion. This is what the Messenger وسلم, did. Allah said, His Messenger said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is what we do. And what is upon us to say, is to say how or what. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us with? Not why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us with such and such. Leave the why alone because this is when you say why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us with this or why did Allah legislate this, then uh, in that you are opposing the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And rather what you're supposed to ask is what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us with? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislate for us? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is not questioned about what He does and they are questioned. We are questioned about what we do. Finally, no. I would like to add here that Shaykh al-Islam Taymi رحمه الله تعالى ذكر عند قصة نوح عليه السلام وولده أن ولده استخدم عقله ولده استخدم عقله وقال سأوي إلى جبل يعصمني من الماء نوح عليه السلام يخبره بالوحي لا عاصم اليوم من أمر الله هذا وحي وهو يقول سأوي إلى جبل الجبل نعم إذا جاء مطر إذا جاء لسان يذهب إلى مكان مرتفع لكن نوح عليه السلام يخبره بأن الله أوحى إليه أن 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 جميعهم سيغرقون فلذلك لما عصى الوحي واستخدم عقله غرق وقال شيخ الإسلام كل من عارض كل من عارض الوحي فإنه يغرق في ظلمات عياذا بالله في ظلمات وهؤلاء أهل البدع لما عارضوا النصوص بعقولهم أغرقهم الله عز وجل في الظلمات والله أعلم Great benefit from our Shaykh Abdul Allah. He said that Shaykh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, when he mentioned the story and he uh, talked about the story of Nuh alayhi salam and his son. That Nuh alayhi salam, that his son, he said, when they started seeing the rain and the water coming from the earth, his son, he said, I will go to a mountain that, pr that protects me from the water. His son, the son of Nuh alayhi salam, he used his intellect. Yes, people go to the mountain. If there is rain, if there is a small flood, whereas Nuh alayhi salam was speaking of the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La asima, that there is no protection from the command of Allah, from the, uh, the punishment of Allah on this day. 
So this is when one uses his intellect, he drowns. He used his intellect and he drowned. Whereas Nuh he used the revelation and he mentioned the revelation and he was, and those who follow the revelation, they are saved. And likewise, anyone who uses his intellect in opposition to the, to the legislation, then he drowns in darknesses. The people of innovation, they are drowning in darknesses. And the people who follow the legislation, they are saved by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakum Allah. Jazakum Allah. Jazakum Allah. Jazakum Allah.